Economically, what is Hungary's plan to deal with COVID-19? We based our plan on five pillars. First, to protect as many workplaces as possible. Second, create new workplaces because surely there will be workplaces which are gone or which will be seized. The third, that we have traditional sectors in which Hungarian companies are strong. And we want to strengthen these companies because we want to use this crisis as well to leapfrog it. So we want to, yeah, we want to leapfrog. So we have some strong industries like food industry, healthcare, health industry, uh, infrastructural, uh, infrastructure investments. The tourism sector is also very important. The fourth pillar is um, um, providing finances to the companies, cheap credits, government subsidized right. uh, credits, guarantee schemes, uh, capital, cheap capital. And the fifth, protect the families and, and the pensioners because we do everything for the Hungarian families and pensioners at the end of the day. Well, one thing that stood out to me that you just mentioned was that healthcare is, is a strong sector in Hungary. I said healthcare, but then I corrected. It's health industry, health which is industry. Really strong. Right. Healthcare also uh, performed very well in the crisis, but th its role was to protect the citizens from COVID in the first phase, in the first wave of, of COVID-19, and also in the second wave of COVID-19. But health industry is traditionally strong. Pharmaceutical industry, biotechnological industry, vaccination. So we are very strong in, 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 in medicines and health industry. Right. And how does Hungary's plan differ from different countries' plans? I would say there are four uh, main differences, and uh, so I will stylize the facts. Sure, yeah. But uh, the Hung first, the Hungarian Economic Protection Plan is rather um, uh, based on uh, responsibility and more proportionate and more focused, because there were some, some voices which said that we should uh, uh, poor helicopter money or free money on the society. Uh, one of the 40 economists in Hungary said that United States, it was very, in the United States it was very strong. Let, let me um, show you the difference. Mm. The United States economy will decline in, in, to a greater extent than the Hungarian economy. But the United States spent 15 percentage point of its GDP on economic protection mm. in the first three months. Hungary altogether, and, and their uh, budget what, deficit what, will increase what, what by 20, mean? 25 percent. What does that mean? What, what specifically did the U.S. do? Um, gave uh, money to each and every citizen. Right, uh, the, the famous stimulus checks of the stimulus, famous stimulus checks, um, without any distinction whether he or she is in need or not, or affected by the virus, affected by the effects, the side effects, the economic effects of the virus or not. And our uh, interventions were much more focused, mm -hmm. and it's very, it's very, very important. We have to keep our balance. Uh, the 2007 and 8 crisis hit us very uh, hard, and uh, we don't want to get back to that situation. We had, we built up our balance in the last 10 years, and we want to protect that balance as well. Not only the economy, but that balance as well. The second very important distinction is that our interventions are work-based and knowledge-based and not, how to say, subsidy-based. So we say that keep as many workplaces as possible. If somebody loses their job, her or his job, then provide uh, her or him with um, education. We had a free eight-week-long uh, education for, uh, for informatics, for IT knowledge. For, so for, you're for investing in making people employable in the future. Exactly. Thank you very much for sure. making it very clear <laughs> for me. And, uh, and not, not much on subsidies. We give subsidies to those who lost their jobs, but rather keep their workplaces, or if they lose uh, their workplaces, then uh, give them chance to work again, newly educated. What the other kinds of education would, were people able to get if it wasn't just in IT? We focus now on IT because mm -hmm. we knew that uh, those sectors which are most affected. We checked uh, the employment market. The most jobs demanded are in the IT business first. Second, we saw that those who are providing programming skills, there are companies who are schools are providing programming skills, right. they said 30% of their uh, students, uh, pupils, were coming from the tourism sector even before the crisis, mm. which means that those people who are most affected of losing their jobs, they were capable of doing these, these, uh, these courses and will be able to employ it with 
for 40, 60 percent higher wages in the short run and in the long run they can double their wages. The third very uh, important and distinctive difference between the Hungarian Economic Protection Action Plan and, and the others, I would say that we want to preserve the organized knowledge here in Hungary. What does that mean? That means that a crisis is not only a crisis but also an opportunity. Opportunity for those who have money and they are buying in. And they are buying companies not only to operate these companies further but to buy their markets. And that happened with the Hungarian companies in the 1990s. That was the lesson of the 2008 crisis as well. So we created um, a property or a ownership protection uh, law in Hungary to protect those Hungary, uh, in Hungary operated companies, whether they be foreign or domestically owned. If they want to sell their companies, we want to know why they want to, uh, why they want to sell it. If they are in need, then we can help them with with the cheap credits, with the guarantee programs, with the capital programs. And if, but if we understand that the buyer has uh, non-violent uh, intentions, mm. they want to operate the company uh, further on and they want to employ right. their people, then we will let the transaction happen. But if right. not, then we will, we will not, not okay. allow it. I, I, I want to interrupt you quickly because we, have, uh, we already have an audience question. Oh. So mm -hmm. I think you've really lit a, lit a fire over here. So some say the pandemic didn't change things. It just fastened the pace of change. What happened to your job in strategic planning? Well, it's a very, very good question because in the last 10 years, I always said that Hungary is running a patriotic and pragmatic economic policy. It means that what is good for the Hungarian families, what for good for the Hungarian workplaces and wage increase, workplaces, stabilization, that is good for us. It sounds very simple, but when I go to Brussels, to competitiveness councils where mm -hmm. I represent Hungary, and I'm talking about that the European economic policy should be patriotic, and they should allow nation states in the, in the European Union be patriotic in their economic policies, they didn't understand me. And then the crisis hit, and no, none of the European Union member states were prepared for such a pandemic because we didn't have uh, industry eligible health industry. We were talking right. about health industry. We are strong in some segments of the health industry, but some other segments which we needed for, uh, for protection, masks, ventilators, uh, gloves. So it accelerated that what I'm talking about is just, and, and, and we should give more uh, space to such kind of patriotic and pragmatic economic policies. Uh, you, you raise a really interesting topic with, with patriotism, and specifically what I want to ask you related to, 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 to healthcare and the health industry as well is that um, what we've seen and what a lot of experts are talking about is the so-called brain drain which is that you know, smart people get, an, get a really good education in Hungary and then they take that elsewhere to Western Europe or the UK or America and then they, they pursue their economic interests there and then they, they make a lot of money there. And what we're left with is those people having been educated here and not working here to not benefit the country. So in, in order to fill that gap, don't you think that one of the ways in which Hungary would benefit greatly is by having a more friendly immigration policy to get intelligent people from other parts of the world in to help fill that gap. And wouldn't that help to kind of fill the gap, especially in, in the healthcare industry, where we're seeing record numbers of short staffing and you know, horrendous stories, I'm sure you've heard them, of basically the, the shortage of skills in, in, in hospitals and other healthcare facilities. Yeah, let me, let me make this thing clear. We have now the wisest and the friendliest migration policy in Hungary. We have never spent as much on Stipendium Hungaricum, the scholarship programs helping African, Middle East uh, students coming from African countries, Middle East countries, from Asia to Hungary and to study here. And their number is accelerating. I mean, we are doing that, but we also make it sure that they go back. They, they serve here uh, a few years, but they go back and help we are not brain draining them, but we are help them to, to, uh, to build their countries. And the other thing, we are very confident that as Hungary is growing and Central Eastern Europe is growing and has its opportunities uh, from the crisis or after the crisis, that many Central and Eastern Europeans will come back. And there is a tendency already 
that uh, Hungarians are coming back to. Mm -hmm. Hungary, Polish are going back to, to Poland because we think that we can create an attractive environment. I'm, t I'm lecturing at the university. No, and no, I no. Always, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm not, not, not now, but I, <laughs> I used <laughs> to lecture speaking, at the university. Right. And, and I always tell my students, go abroad, study abroad. I also did it. It was a very, very important and most, most, one of the most important part of my life. Right. Because you can learn so much about yourself Absolutely. and about your culture and who you are. Go abroad, learn and then come back. I also did the same. I learned abroad, I worked abroad, and I knew that I have to do something here in Hungary. And I'm very confident that those Hungarians who are now working abroad, many of them will come back. Interesting. That's, a, that, that, that's certainly a response which I'm sure will incite a lot of comments. <laughs> Speaking of which, we have, uh, we have a question. How can Hungarian citizens win the crisis? And what is your advice to them? So you, you asked me about the differences uh, of the Hungarian Economic Protection Action Plan combined to others, and that's, I was at the third point. <laughs> and uh, uh, in the third and the fourth point, there is the, the answer. Right. Um, let me finish the third point. We are protecting the organized knowledge here in Hungary, which means we have this ownership protection program, and we also have a special scheme for job protection for research development and innovation workplaces, uh, which means we are safeguarding these high value added promising high wages workplaces. Mm -hmm. The fourth thing is that we are spending much more on investments and subsidizing investments to protecting the securing the jobs mm -hmm. and creating new jobs and investing into new technologies. Uh, we have a program for Hungarian micro, small and medium enterprise companies which we named Hungarian high tech and green because we want to make them hung, uh, green and high tech, the Hungarian right. companies. So we made decisions, government decisions, to the extent of more than 500 billion Hungarian foreign investment subsidies to foster investments here in Hungary, which means that um, we are investing much more in the new workplaces and strengthening the workplaces than other countries. That's my, that's my answer that, to that question. Great. So we have one more question from Hamza Butaleb, not a Hungarian. Does the government help the pharma industry in Hungary to take part in the competition of vaccine development? Yes, we have a vaccine development program in Debrecen. The test vaccines will be ready in two weeks, as far as I'm concerned. Uh -huh. And then we will see how it will uh, further develop. We have the funding for, for, for vaccine development and we have an extra 85 billion Hungarian foreigners to foster investments in the pharma industry, I mean the health industry, Great. out of this more than 500 billion which I mentioned just before. Excellent. Now, I, I have a general question about um, the economic policies in Hungary. So, what we've seen recently is that cases of COVID-19 are going up. And recently, I think it was last week, Mr. Orban said that we're not going to have as strict a lockdown as we did a few months ago because the economy cannot survive that. And what I'm seeing right now, kind of to my dismay, I'm disappointed to see this, is that a lot of bars and parties, and it's, it's almost like it was business as usual, but we're seeing this in conjunction with increased cases of COVID-19. So what's, what, what's the trade-off? Isn't stimulating the economy and helping the economy against the interests of keeping people safe and healthy? Yeah. Well, we don't want lockdowns. I think we have the, the measures not to lock down the uh, economy and the country as we had to do it in the first uh, wave of the COVID-19, that's for sure. Um, well, I think we have, we have our, our own responsibility. My state secretariat created a white paper for companies to decrease the risks of the spread of, uh, of the pandemics and to avoid the company closures or, or lockdowns. So, I, I suggest that the, the company owners and the managements are reading it and, and using this material. I have very good feedbacks on that white paper. The other thing what we can do personally, also reading all these uh, white papers which are there to, to help um, our, to protect ourselves against COVID-19. I was invited to several parties in the last few weeks and I did not go not even to open air parties. You know, there are these, uh, I don't want to mention uh, uh, places around Budapest, which are very uh, full of people because I will, I will make their 
business go down and <laughs> they will complain for that. Well, we're but not talking about his Fröchteras. We're not talking <laughs> about them. <laughs> I'm not talking any of, of these uh, uh, places. But, but I think now, now the, the younger generations have to be more cautious. Yeah. Death cases are not high uh, for the younger generations. And it seems it's very mild for most of the younger generations. But as it trickles up to the right. elderly, exactly. it's our responsibility. If I, if I consider myself still right. to the young, younger generation, right. it's our responsibility uh, right. to, to um, be more so secure. Last question before I let you go. In your estimation, how long do you think it'll take for Hungary to bounce back economically from this crisis? I, I think, um, yeah, well, we have very export competitive sectors like the car industry, the automotive industry, which was most severely hit by the crisis. It jumped back in a V-shaped form. So the capacities are used at the OEMs, the automotive uh, mm -hmm. the car manufacturers and the tier one uh, suppliers. And it is, it is pulling the other sectors of the economy. There are some parts of the economy which until we don't have vaccine will not recover. Right. Well, audience, that concludes our time with Dr. Laszlo Djörg. I want to thank you for your time, and I want to thank you for asking your questions. I really appreciate it. I hope you feel enlightened. I know I certainly do. I've been Sid Murthy. Thank you very much.